Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. We're coming to you live from Yankee Springs State Recreational Area in Gun Lake, Michigan. And we're going to talk to you tonight about one of my uh, topics that I've been dealing with for quite a while on how to take your bikes with you when you tow with your R-Pod. You know, I really like biking. It's been on a few of the past videos. And I'm going to tell a little bit about my story with biking. You know, I've wanted to take my bikes, my mountain bikes, with us when we've gone uh, camping, but we've had a difficult time knowing how to do that. We came up with a solution that's working for us now, but I went for over a year of having an R-Pod and not knowing the best way to take my, uh, my mountain bikes with me. So we're going to talk about different options. There's actually, we're going to go through eight different options really quick here as far as uh, different options for taking your, your bikes with you with your R-Pod, starting from the very front of your tow vehicle going to the very back of the uh, trailer. So the first one is putting your bikes on the very front of the tow vehicle. It, it makes it, you know, you get a hitch for the front of the tow vehicle and the bikes are out of the way and it doesn't add any weight to the trailer or the tongue, but you know, they're on the front of your truck or SUV, so it, they do kind of become bug catchers and it can be expensive to add another hitch to the front of your tow vehicle. So be aware of that, but it is an option that people do use. They do put the the uh, hitch on the front of the tow vehicle. So that's option number one. The second one, you've probably seen this as well, is putting it on actually on top of the tow vehicle. So this is either on a truck or an SUV or uh, some other vehicle that you're actually putting the bikes up on top of the roof of the tow vehicle. Now the pluses here is again, it doesn't add any weight to the tongue or trailer, but it does add weight to the tow vehicle obviously. And it is kind of out of the way. You can get into the trailer, and into the tow vehicle easily, and the bikes are on top and out of the way. Of course, you know, it's up on top of the tow vehicle, so it's hard to get the bikes up and down. Uh, you have potential damage to the tow vehicle if you make a mistake and it slips or whatnot. But it is a little tedious to get them up and down off the top of the tow vehicle. So that's the second one. Okay, the next thing is actually if you have a truck, uh, putting them on top of the truck bed. Now this requires usually some sort of rail system. But again, it doesn't add weight to the, tow ve to the trailer or the tongue, but it does add weight to the uh, tow vehicle. You know, the negative here is it's expensive. The rail systems can be kind of expensive that you have to actually put on the truck, put some cross beams on, bike racks, the whole thing, so it can add up quite a bit. And again, you know, it's a little bit difficult to get the bikes up and down off the back of your truck to, uh, to deal with them. So the fourth one we're talking about is we're going from the front of the tow vehicle back to the trailer is actually put them in the bed of the truck or in the co cargo area of the SUV. So this is, is kind of nice because it doesn't add, again, it doesn't add any weight to the, to, to the trailer or to the tongue. Now the problem is here that you, is that obviously you lose a lot of storage. So now if you put it in your, the bed of your truck, it really does take up a lot of extra space. So that's a negative thing. And of course it can be tough to get them in, in and out of your truck bed or your, uh, your tow vehicle. So just be aware of that if you take up the storage space. Okay, the next one as we move back toward the trailer here is a hitch extender. Now if you think about it, when you put your, your uh, trailer onto your truck or your tow vehicle, you're hicking it to a hitch. Now these extenders pop out a good distance and they, they provide kind of a bar space that you can actually clamp on a bike rack to the back of the hitch. Uh, and it's got pluses and minuses too. The nice thing is it's right there. It's easy to get the bikes on and off. And of course, you know, it doesn't add any weight to the trailer, but it does add weight to the tongue. So you got to be a little more careful when you're towing. It also, you also need to be aware that when you extend the uh, hitch like that with one of these extenders, it's going to also lower the capacity of your towing. And so you need to be aware of that too. So make sure you got plenty of tow vehicle to do this with. So as we move back, and this is a popular one that's coming to play later, uh, much later here is a tongue riser. So this is one where you actually clamp the, uh, the bike rack and system onto your tongue, whether it be at the jack or at the A-frame where it goes above your utilities, above your propane tank or your battery. And then you have to put a bike rack on top of that. And, you know, the bikes are sitting above your, your battery pack and your your um, propane tank. So just be aware of that. The nice thing is it is out of the way. You can get your, your tow vehicle easily if you have a truck in the bed of the truck easily. It's not sitting on top of anything in that regard. It's not on the back of the trailer. It's not adding a whole lot extra weight on the trailer. It is adding weight on the tongue though. So be aware again, you're adding weight on the tongue of the trailer. Okay, the, another negative of this is again, it's hard to get on, on and off. They're sitting up above the frame. So it's not the easiest thing to get the bikes on and off. So the next one as we go back toward 
toward the uh, trailer now is actually putting the bikes inside the R pod or inside the trailer. Again, this is nice because they're hidden from sight, right? So they're not visible to anyone. It's also low cost, so you're not buying a bike rack per se. You're just trying to set them up inside the trailer. Now, this is going to add a little bit of trailer weight, however heavy the bikes are. And obviously, right, <laughs> there's potential damage if you don't do a really good job tying them down. Now, there's, there's systems you can tie down with. There's things you can put in the floor, etc. but it's quite a bit of work. But be aware, if you're going to do this, you better know what you're doing because if you don't do it right and things get bounced around, those bikes could go flying and do significant damage inside your R-Pod, okay? And so it's a little bit tough to lock down. The other thing is the bikes are kind of dirty. I mean, anytime I'm riding my bike, if I rub up against the chain, it's grease all over me. So just be aware you're bringing your bikes inside. Could, could rub against your fabric when you're getting them set up, whatever, and get it dirty. So be aware of that. Okay, and finally, at the very back of the trailer is the trailer hitch. Now, the nice thing I like about the trailer hitch, and that's what we ended up going with, by the way, is using the back trailer hitch is it actually adds just minimal incremental weight versus your spare tire. So again, those of you guys have been following know that I have an R-Pod 179 and it's in a 2017 version of the 179. And we have a big spare tire. It's a 15 inch wheel, so it's a 15 inch spare tire in the back. And this just takes minimal incremental weight to that space. It's easy to access because the bikes aren't raised up or anything, it's just right on the back of the trailer. And the, the negatives obviously, the bikes are pretty visible. And you have to do something with your spare tire. So I put my spare tire in my truck. What did we do? We went with a Let's Go Aero Bike Wing 2 version that works really well with the smaller hitch in the back of the R-Pod. And well within the 150 pound capacity that's on the sticker at the hitch in the back of the uh, R-Pod trailer. So that's one thing you wanna make sure you check depending on your year, you may not have that much capacity. The 2017 179, does have 150 pounds so it made it much easier to deal with now remember there's an incremental difference so what we did is we actually weighed everything we took the bike hitch uh, we took the bike hitch and the bikes and weighed them we took the spare tire and the spare tire hitch and weighed that when we weighed the spare tire and hitch the hitch was about just under 11 pounds 10.8 pounds the tire itself fully inflated was 46.4 pounds so the total weight was 57.2 pounds so in essence, if 150 pound total weight, I had 92, almost 93 pounds extra um, in the hitch weight that I could use just with the spare being on there. Now with the bike, the Aero uh, Bike Wing 2 is 16 pounds, 16.2. We had two Trek mountain bikes, an 820, if you guys know Treks at all. The 820 is the steel version, it's the big mama. It's not lightweight, it's 35 pounds, so it's a big Trek mountain bike. And then we had another Trek 3700, which is 31 pounds. So that's those aren't light mountain bikes, and you can get lighter bikes if you want to spend the money. These are not light, light mountain bikes, they're both over 30 pounds. So that all together, 35 pounds for the 820, 31.6 pounds for the Trek 3700, plus the weight of the Aero 2, that was 83 pounds. So what we ended up with is 67 pounds net that we had to play with to get up to the 150 pounds total weight we could use on the hitch. So I felt pretty good about it. When you do the differential, basically we're putting 25, just under 26 pounds, 25.8 pounds extra on the back hitch. So that's not too much and I felt well within the 150 pound limit. We're pretty happy with that. So what about the likes and dislikes of the Aero 2? So let's go over those real quick. The likes, is that we tested this out for over 800 miles going up to northern Michigan and the UP and back uh, to southern, southern western Michigan this last couple months here and it did ex extremely well. So I'm very pleased with how it did even with those bigger mountain bikes. No issues, no problems. It, the Aero 2 worked really well. Um, it attaches the bikes very securely um, and it's not very heavy. It didn't have any problems at all. I was very happy with the performance of the bike rack. The bikes felt really secure on there. And it, by the way, it's very reasonably priced. So those are things I really like about the Aero 2. Um, some of the dislikes, uh, the Aero 2, and we'll, we'll show you some video here. You, you can put it together. The wings go into the slots and they can actually be turned backward or forward and on both sides. So when you think about it, there's actually eight different combinations of putting thing, these things on. So you can, you know, subsequent times you use it, you almost need to mark it so that you put it on the same way each time or you make it confused to where the bike's set. And of course, another big negative is that you have to put the spare tire somewhere else 
and we had space in the truck bed but you know longer trips i probably don't want to do that much but there's there for us we put the spare in the truck bed work fine no problems okay so let's talk real quick about the installation process so the first thing you have to do obviously is you have to remove the hitch from and the spare tire from the r pot so all you do is you go out, you get the proper wrench, and by the way, the lugs on the spare tire hitch are the same size lugs that are on the wheel, so if you have the right size socket, it'll also work on the spare tire without any issue. So you just undo that, you take the hitch off, no problem, you set that aside, and the spare tire, and set that aside for now. Then you put the bike hitch together, the hitch bottom part goes right into the socket hitch on the trailer, and the nice thing I like about it, it has a bolt that tightens down and so you can tighten it right down onto the bike hitch and it gets really secure so that's a great thing nice piece of that product that I enjoy and then the you know once you put the wings on you can then place your bikes and we put the heavier bike toward the trailer and the lighter bike away from the trailer but it was pretty easy to put them on there and they tie down real easy rubber straps that tie tight and they work really well Okay, so a few tips just if you're going to go with this uh, method for your solution for bikes is when you put this on, look for rub spots. They have the padding around the wings. Just more, make sure those padding, that pad is between the metal parts of your bike and the metal parts of the bike hitch so you don't have any rubbing. And then, um, of course, remove any loose uh, accessories from your bike before you do this. And, you know, any kind of bike computers or lights or anything, you might want to take those off first. Any bags, take all that stuff out first and store it before you put the bikes on. Okay, and then, like I said earlier, consider, mar once you get it right, consider marking, put a piece of tape or something, gaffer's tape or, Scott, or painter's tape or whatever on the bike wings. You know, mark it driver's side top, passenger side top, and make sure that, so you can remember next time how to set it up. All right, so the verdict. I really would recommend the Aero 2 bike wing. I think it works really well for us and it works well for the R-Pod 179. You need to check your weight limits on your uh, R-Pod and the, uh, the hitch on the back to make sure that you're well within grounds to be able to do this. But it worked well for us. We're going to continue to use it. We're using it right now at Yankee Springs, by the way. No problems at all. So there's a quick review of the Aero 2 bike wing and some of the different options for taking bikes with you. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up again. And feel free to subscribe. We love having you on the channel. And by the way, again, you can follow us on Instagram, John Marucci, and Twitter, John Marucci. We'll give you uh, updates and some even, even some news about things going on and what's coming up. So we love having you on the channel. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. This is John Marucci. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.